Got a Kufun micro PC with a with a quad core J4125 Celeron processor, eight gigata gigatas of RAM. Let's uh, attach this to the screen. Run a boot disk latency test and see if it's got decent numbers. This came, this came uh, suggested on the Linux Sansi forum. So if it does work, I'll put a link in the description. And if it crashes and burns, you'll be here with me for the ride. Boy, that was grueling. Unboxing has taken us into the wee hours of the night. Along with a mountain bike ride and dinner and what have you. But here it is. Kufun. Hopefully not useless brick. Cute. It's got all the pertinence. It's got... USBs, a couple of Ethernet ports, HDMI, a little double penetration going on there. Gonna uh, wire it up and boot off USB and see what I can get out of it for latency numbers. It comes with uh, an HDMI cable and it comes with a DisplayPort cable. They're not the longest thing in the world, they're kind of short. Comes with some like mounting brackets and what have you, and there's the display port cable. One of them's in a bag and one of them is not in the bag. Doesn't make any sense, but I've got it plugged into touchscreen. I'll just boot it up into wind blows and see what version it's got. It should have Windows 11 on it. So you get the splash screen, that's cool. Cool fun. It's probably going to try to walk me through the whole shit and shebangy as I watch Stranger Things. Nah, yeah, you guys don't care about this. I'm going to boot this up to Linux and see what it does. Well, unbeknownst to me, my keyboard from my computer that I haven't really touched since 2010, maybe, is USB. Everything else that I've got is PS2. Don't ask. If you don't know what a PS2 is, then you are too young for this channel. Got it booting into Debian right now. This is 10. This is the live boot disk from the, uh, this is the ISO from the website. All right, let's see. Go applications. All right, touch screen still works. Uh, CNC latency test, and we'll see what she's looking like. Okay, so servo thread looking pretty good so far, but let's do a GLX gears. See if we can grab the corner here. Here we go. Biggie, smallie. I gotta go corner. Corner. You can see it's got... It's gonna have some slow down here, but let's do the old test here and see. It's gonna take forever and a day for it to catch up, but... Okay. 25,000. So this is what we're looking for. We're looking for the jitter numbers here. Open up another one. I usually open up a bunch of them in latency histogram. Two of them bumped it up to 33,000. And then again, do the same thing. This is easier with a mouse. You can move them around. So far, latency numbers don't look bad. All things considered, I mean, it's a $170 little seller on things. I mean, that gives me hope. I'm going to uh, I'm going to run through the installation and see what see what it'll do. I mean, that that's given that's a good sign. Especially cuz this is running straight off of the USB port. You can't do any of the uh, CPU isolation anything like that. So 40,000 for Mesa hardware is very good. It's good, great. It's fantastic. <laughs> it'll work. And I don't think there will be any kind of major issues with it. Let me see something here. Let's see if I can open up. Sometimes if you open up Linux CNC, 
you'll instantly get as it's trying to load some of the more intense screens you'll actually get some issues dragon okay yes okay let's see if it gives me a message usually it'll, it'll give you a message in the corner if the uh latency spikes uh, e-stop machine on I mean, so far so good i wish i could do a i wish i could do a latency check with linux cnc running but it doesn't seem to want to do that for you but so far the numbers are looking okay i'm going to install linux on this thing and i think i'm going to have a i think i'm going to have a winner with this so it's another day i finished installing last night but wanted to uh get a chance to run through this real quick let me fire this thing up i want to show you something I don't know if this makes a difference. Holding the delete key when you fire up the, the mini PC. Get to the BIOS configuration. Now this thing, I've never had a UEFI install go as easily as this. So I'm I'm thinking this might be the reason. But under security, under uh, secure boot settings here, under key management, if you go to enroll EFI image, Select the, the USB, and then under EFI boot, I picked the grubx64.efi image. And when I ran through the installer, even after configuring Windows 11, the grub installer went in no problem without having to go through legacy settings and, and stuff like that. I, I Again, I don't know if that was the reason for it, but I did that, and it was a flawless install. Let me exit out of here. Discard and say, discard changes, blah, blah, blah. All right. So we get to the Grub bootloader. Go into Debian. These shiny screens are going to be the death of me. It fires right up. It runs pretty good. There's uh, supposedly a setting where you can max out the CPU, but I haven't had any time to poke with that. But if we go here, applications, CNC, latency test. Even with the latency test running, I can go into internet, go to Chromium. I can go to YouTube. Touchscreen works nice. I don't know. Let, let's pick something. I don't want to pick anything that would give me a copyright strike. So let's go to my page. And we'll just run this. And you can see that the latency numbers... So I do want to point out one thing. <laughs> I want to point out that, yes, I am a monetized channel. And I do, I do have ads that go at the beginning or the end of videos. But I will never, ever, ever, I don't care how much more it will make me, I will never put ads in the middle of my videos. If you see them, that's YouTube doing it, not me. Because I will never do that. It is such a pain watching other people's videos and then they're like, okay, so let's get started. Blam, right into it, right into an ad. It's just, it's infuriating. But you could see latency numbers are really good. And I haven't made any adjustments to this thing at all. Now I had purchased a I had purchased a uh, mini PC that was twice the price and the latencies were in the hundreds of thousands not even 100,000 this was like 400,000 on an i5 processor so I, I ran into issues I've run into issues with i5 processors either myself or by proxy, other people saying they're having latency issues. And it always seems to be that it's an i5 processor or most times it seems to be an i5 processor. So you have to do a lot of uh, CPU isolation with the i5s. This, this is a quad core Celeron J4125. And I mean, that, that's a good number. That is a good number right there. You can't run latency test while you're loading Linux CNC, but again, if I go into Linux CNC and I go into oh here's QT Dragon Dragon 
Okay. Usually the QT based interfaces will mm. cause a spike in the latency. And I'm not getting any latency errors there. Everything seems to work smoothly. I don't use the QT based GUIs, but it's usually a good test to see if anything's going to spike on you is to load one of them up because, like I say, they, they, they tend to be a little bit more resource intensive. So with Wi-Fi going and YouTube running, sound, video, we're getting good numbers. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for this mini PC because this thing seems like it's going to be a good, a good machine for my usage. And I'll be doing some testing with the Mesa boards and I'll be using that thing. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. I, I'm quite happy with the install of Linux CNC on this Kufun GK41 Celeron mini PC. So let's see if it stands the test of time. Thanks for watching.